All right, good morning. This is a very important moment here. And of course, I can see Dr. Fred, uh, Frank Yagon is already tuned in and watching. And I just want us to go straight to our discussion today. Uh, we've talked about, you know, being careful, the common mistakes we do. And also we've talked about, you know, how to at least protect yourself, to be aware. Different videos we have played here, we've seen, we talked about weekend fatalities. And maybe just to bring the picture home, I remember when Mr. Otet was tweeting, I know he will say good morning. He reminded us that this is not to actually scare us. <laughs> so this segment is not to scare you that you're probably going to have a crash and a certain injury, but just to bring home what the reality looks like when you actually get into that you know, accident and what injuries you expect. So allow me to welcome the, uh, my expert on set. Good morning sir good morning how are you today uh fine thank you how are you i'm excited i, I feel great this morning it's amazing amazing to be alive today mm -hmm. so we only have one uh, remaining responsibility to arrive alive absolutely um there is a tweet you read and the author says if you are a learner please avoid mombasa road uh, what he basically means is Mombasa Road right now is a live construction zone. It has several warning signs that even us, most of us experienced drivers are going to miss. Then two, uh, along that stretch, there are places that are on the waterways and uh, that is why we see crazy floodings and mm -hmm. it's revealing a lot of poor workmanship and that is fatal, mm -hmm. very grave on the engineering fail. So it's just sharing out a message of love because these new, we call them newbies, might not be able to handle certain situations like I have a friend who she stopped the car and started screaming because the water was in waves and it's like the waves are almost reaching her and uh, she didn't know what to do mm -hmm. so she gave me a call and we saw how to help mm -hmm. but that is not about today today is about a beautiful talk that allows you to understand certain things uh, we are aware if you don't put on your mask mm -hmm. your probability of getting infected with covid is one there are no chances that you will miss it. If you go close to somebody who has been infected, you will catch it. So that is what the Ministry of Health and the Government of Kenya, together with the World Health Organization, yes. has made us be aware of. So today what we are going to talk about should not scare you. Yeah. It should only make you aware of what might happen so that you anticipate and brace yourself for what happens. So we want to talk about most common injuries that happen when a crash happens. Uh, I will not mention the injuries before mentioning the type of collisions that we have. We, we, these collisions lead to these injuries. So yes. we have three types of collisions. The first one will be the motor vehicle collision. This is when a vehicle hits a stagnant or, or obstacle or a vehicle hits another vehicle when a vehicle hits a motorcycle it's a motor vehicle collision because the first heat of the impact reaches the equipment you are inside or you are on top so it's the motor vehicle collision this causes a lot of harm depending with the inertia and the impact is always seen on the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, as we were having a beautiful talk here, there was a head-on collision along Kinungi and two people lost their lives. If you see that kind of image that was there, the Mercedes-Benz, the whole engine is inside the driver's cabin. And then the Fortuna, the engine is swallowed up. Mm. You look at it and you don't want to really try even to think what happened. Then number two, we have human collision with the interior of the vehicle. The first is a motorcycle, so it has happened. Yes. Remember the human body was in inertia. If you are doing 120, your body is still traveling at 120. So if you are not belted, 
you're still moving at 120 and the steering steering wheel might hit you if there was a loose umbrella it would pierce you if there was a pen if there was basically an secured cargo inside that car or any unsecured item they would now cause the second degree of injury mm -hmm. which is now whatever is inside the car to your body so we have the second that is now called human collision then the third one which might be overlooked yes is the human body with the human organs all right so the vehicle has hit a stone an umbrella has come and hit your medulla so it is your body now with its own organs probably a broken rib punctures the lung okay have you ever seen crashes where there was no big deal the one that happened in kivu kivu embu 15 lives lost you at, at the car was going uphill fully kaisha then it rolled back and 15 people died because the vehicle just toppled over so we, we want to try and look at that scene and we want to try and understand what really happened that 15 lives were lost so you find that there was no much vehicle collusion impact there was no much uh, interior mm -hmm. and human body collusion but probably there was a lot of human body and human body organs mm -hmm. that is when uh you hit your head on the headrest and uh, the skull breaks and affects the medulla or the brain tissue so you would find out crash that somebody looks okay but yeah. they're dead is, is this is this where the instances instances where we hear they died from internal bleeding is thank it? you yes you you brought it out so well so these are injuries that are on inside but we don't see them and in fact from an expert advice because people who have crashes during the day mm. they are more likely to die because they are being rescued okay yes people who die who get crashes in the night they stay much longer and they have higher chances of survival because at night we rarely do the rescue mm -hmm. but call the emergency services so we oh. bring in trained personnel but during the day like if you look at kinungi crash the photo shows a man trying to dig that car with an x so you hit the metal mm -hmm. it hits that guy so we hurt them more and my advice from an expert side would be if you find a crash if you are not trained and certified first aid responder please just look, just watch right. don't touch because the more we remove them the more they get more injuries spinal injuries they, they, they become more paralyzed so with the mentioning of those three yes i can now comfortably transition to the injuries yes. Yes. that we expect so the first one will be the face and the head injuries when we talk about motorcycle riding i keep on saying that head injuries cannot be rectified when the skull is cracked it's cracked that is it you will live with it forever if it's going to give you blackouts you will live with blackouts stiff neck mm. Uh, uh, there are some tissues around the eye I don't know how to call them when when you get to hit the forehead they become loose and it will always affect your consciousness you will always have blurry vision you will always have smelling issues you will always have nose bleeding issues mm -hmm the scalp might get wounds yes uh, and this normally happens with uh when when you don't belt up because so there is that collapse. ability of hitting whatever is on the front so most of people tell me oh, you are sitting on the front seats you are the one to belt up but remember my seat has an headrest which is directly opposite it looks soft but it is not soft because 
it is meant to, to, to hold my head in an impact so that I don't have the cervical injury on the spine. Mm -hmm. So it's strong. When you meet it head on, you get head injuries. And while it, while it stops me from having the cervia, the cervical injuries, there, there are bones that are placed behind the neck. Yes. So when we go to do what we call fast response, we try and look at how the head of the person is. Okay. When, when, when the head cannot be stable, probably it will bend and, 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 and press the windpipe and then they suffocate and die. Oh. This guy looks okay, yes. but because the cervical bones that lead to the spine could not hold it up together just by a, a little movement, we are done. The worst part is the medulla just below uh, where the neck the muscles joins the neck yes any slight heat you'll be gone can you'll I, be gone can i ask something right there a lot of people feel like usually especially those who are given lifts i would say that think um that is for comfort i don't think a lot of people knew what you're saying today uh, on what the role of that you know headrest is really about and i think it's good that you brought it out today so when, when you're adjusting your mirrors and your seat when you put it at 90 mm -hmm. you always have to pull up your headrest to the level of your head okay so that if you hold the headrest you can touch the top of your head and it has to be in an upright position all right and when you are putting on your sit make sure when you put your wrists the the steering wheel lies here so that when you bring it to nine and three mm -hmm. it gives you a v-shape at a v-shape if you want to carry a baby you cannot carry a baby this way Absolutely this one will not. drop yes. so you always get a v-shape to get to pull your muscles and work with it all right so that is uh facial Injury. Injuries and yes. head. Yes. Now we move to the cervical, which I've mentioned a bit, but I want to prolong it down to the spine. Okay. Any slight heat on the spine will always determine whether you will walk on a wheelchair for the rest of your life or not. This is heat. Just a slight heat. Yeah, okay, heat. Okay. When somebody hits you, maybe with a fist, the impact of a car will not hit you but it will pull you to a sudden stop mm -hmm. so the, the 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 inertia movement makes you jerk a bit like if somebody wants to tickle you the way you jump huh? but this one is out of inertia mm -hmm. so the way the the, the the spine bones are it's never straight it's a bit curvy mm -hmm. it's a bit curvy so it could easily lose connection on any movement whether back or front so the spine is very 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 deadly and that is why i say i am not trained mm -hmm. if i am not trained to be a first aid responder i will not even unbelt that person who has a crash because probably it's that one seat belt holding all right and the moment I'm going to remove it and it flops, I have made him paralyzed for the rest of his life because I'm not trained for it. Then number three, we have the steering wheel impact. Uh, this is common. Mm -hmm. Drivers know. And that is why you find some people pulling away their seats to, to, to in mind that they want to avoid a heat to a point that they cannot control the steering wheel. When you see somebody driving this way, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, they will not drive for long. That vehicle has to topple over, whether you like it or not, it has to. Because at any sudden swerve, they don't have the stability to control that wheel. So when, when, when that happens, mm -hmm. the head normally hits the windscreen, causing the, the, the neck to move back. Savia is affected yes. because of the sudden move and the spine is hit by inertia then the the chest cavity the steering wheel will hit you um i have a friend called raf yes 
Emmanuel Nonda, I know he's watching from wherever place he is. He says, driving a car that has an airbag is the most beautiful. But please, never salute the airbag. The speed at which it deploys mm -hmm. from its, its compact compactment to that fill, that heat alone will make you, the, the slap itself can make you go unconscious for a whole week. That's intense? It's so intense. It hits you well. You go blank for a whole week. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel has that experience. And he told me, next time I drive, I don't want this thing to deploy. Because the heat is too much. Mm -hmm. He went blank for so long. And uh, most people have suffered memory losses. I, I hear oh. people saying, you know, these vehicles nowadays even have side airbags. Where? Do they? The day it hits you well, mm. you will never, ever, ever wish it happens. So at the chest cavity, when the steering wheel hits you, it probably will break your ribs. And then the movement, any movement, will now start cutting tissues. Probably the heart, probably the diaphragm would be punctured, probably the lungs will be perforated. And uh, it puts you at a very, 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 very bad place. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call the pelvic. This is where the waist is. That is where movement is. Yes. Both two legs. That is where the support of the body is the whole uh, entire body from up to half, that is where you can turn left, you can turn right. right, that is where you can dondosa, that is where you can dance. When you sit, the whole weight rests on the pelvic. And then there is this group of us who want to be cool kids. Eh? So you sit, you align your seat well, incline it, and then step on the dashboard. It just shows us how uncouth we are. And when it hits hard, they have bo broken bones, the femur, knee, everything. It's the worst. Mm. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst. So the, the, the side impact affects the pelvic more. All right. Because inertia is moving on the front. So if you get a side impact, it has to take you away from the front inertia, which makes you go this way. So when you slide a bit, your head still gets to hit the pillar and where the danger is coming from. It gets to prick, it gets to bring cuts, it gets to bring crazy things you would not even want to imagine. Then we have uh, breast legs, uh, fractures and injuries. When the vehicle hits something, most front passengers get broken legs. All right. And I want to tell you this. Viewers, if you're going to buy a vehicle, buy a long nose. A long nose. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the vans we use, the matatus we use, or are short, no short noses. So the impact starts with you. The long nose are these vehicles that have bonnets. All right. There is an engine and everything, then you. But most of our lorries, trucks, uh, like in the U.S., the trucking industry, they don't allow the short notes that we have. They only allow the longer noses. So at impact, there is higher chance of survival for the occupants at the front. So my advice from an expert side would be, have you seen the vehicle I drive? I think I have. It's parked right outside. It has the longest nose ever, by the way. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't choose it because of uh, anything. I did that because of the long nose. So it was intentional. It was very much intentional. Mm -hmm. The long nose saves when you hit the impact is taken with the engine block and reduced. Most of the vehicles we nowadays see, you find that half the engine is with you in the cabin, 
Let's go for uh, Voxy, no, Voxy or Noah. Okay. The half the engine is out, half the engine is inside. So you are in the cabin with the engine. The vehicle I drive, I'm in the cabin without the engine. So Mr. Kenut here will tell you, go for the long nose. Because uh, if you look at these crashes where people have uh, long nose, mm -hmm. we rarely have the breast fractures and the leg injuries. We rarely do. We rarely At least we save do. that part of the injury, if anything. Injuries will come, but we rarely have them. All right. Yes. Okay. So with these injuries, there are these common ones. Cuts. Uh, probably a swollen wrist and we tend to gauge them from what we see ah, it's just a small cut it's just a bruise so a small cut on an artery oh is very vital it's a death case because the heart will be pumping and it's pumped out so you start losing enough uh, circulation of of oxygen? Uh, oxygen in the body yes and then you go then there is a specific type of injury I want to mention. Uh, before we go to the specific type, I'm seeing people are already, you know, picking up what we're talking about. So keep tweeting, let us know uh, what you're picking from the conversation. Remember, we're going to a particular or specific type of injury. You need to just wait for that. Um, now, uh, at Aberi Nyargem, uh, says from the discussion the importance uh, the importance of belting cannot be overemphasized it saves lives guys and she's reiterating what you're saying and she's watching from Utawala thank you for watching of course Edgar uh, here is watching Edgar Wanyahururu is saying hashtag the morning drift Nyahururu tune good morning please let us know where you're watching from and what you're picking from the discussion uh, let's go back to the specific injury where we were talking about I have talked about physical injuries mm -hmm. so I want to talk about emotional all right trauma that is caused when these injuries happen probably you broke your legs and you're never going to walk well again. There is a trauma that comes with it. Mm -hmm. There is an emotional part that comes with it. This one should be best handled by a trained counselor. You know, when, 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 when we see people with broken bones and mm -hmm. we only see them for that time, and probably it's three months and they're now walking in clashes and they're trying to come back to themselves. Emotional and trauma injuries are the worst because uh, most of these crashes, they make us die emotionally. The worst person to deal with is a person who is dead emotionally. They have nothing to lose. Mm. And that is why at some point, when they come back to the road, they don't care. They always want people to go through what they, they went, went through. through. And this is a very, very dangerous mm -hmm. bit of it that has been overlooked on our roads. And this is what now causes things like road rage. You, 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 you don't want to be overtook. Because every time you get overtook, you remember the guy or the lady or the driver who overtook you stopped in front of you and you rearmed them. And that is why you have the injury that you have right now. So it is the worst, worst type of injury that comes. And this needs medical trained personnel yes. to handle and certified counselors. Because you never care whether it's a baby on the road. Probably your child was hit and they died. Mm -hmm. So you always want to see your another bitter. one go and another one go. And that is when they find their joy. Okay. So it is the worst type of injury. I will not dwell much on it. Mm -hmm. But it is something that cannot also be overlooked on the road safety side mm -hmm. so ensure your vehicle has fu a full kit of uh, first aid box all right 
uh, this one is in question, people question whether to have a fire extinguisher or not. Yes. Until the day your vehicle burns, you'll know. Because people are stingy, they will not even give you theirs. They'll just watch and take videos of how your vehicle is burning. They send to a and ask what could be the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that as we're talking, a lot of people are, you know, picking up. There's one last video we will show you as we wrap up, just to show you when you're gone. What do you leave behind? Because sometimes people are on the road and they feel, well, it's my life, it's my moment, you know, the rest of you are safe, this doesn't have to affect you in any way. But before we wrap up, I'll just um, read some of the feedback on Facebook. And Gregory Change uh, Onganga says, Morning Anki, the discussion's fantastic. If we follow that advice we are given, uh, locked in from Wakra. Okay, I think he was trying to say Accra or Wakra, okay. Now, uh, Bryson Andy says, I see you, Anki keep following thank you very much someone uh, Peter Gishanga says very informative thank you for watching Sam Loco says good morning from the side of Mathare I'm looking up to uh, to you uh, for direct news kindly tell me if I start cycling from here to Kangemi where should I pass due to the human traffic and ask the guests what speed should I cycle at uh, from Mathare to Kangemi there are no much provisions for cycling that is what we are making noise about you hear velma kiyome constant cab these are guys who are coming out to tell uh, our authorities you mm -hmm. know like the expressway uh, pedestrians and cyclists there's no consideration for them okay but then we want to go green when we go green we encourage, we encourage a lot of cycling we encourage a lot of walking on foot so cycle but be very very careful you know when 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 they ask about speeds uh that is not just your normal cyclist by the way the the the, the cyclist professions they go up to 80 kilometers per hour and uh, I've learned to know that the bicycles they have, they are not poor people. Mm -hmm. They are people who don't want to go to the gym, but they want to keep fit. Uh, when I last attended a cyclist event, I saw a, a bicycle that goes for about 300,000 Kenya shillings. That is not your poor man. So you will cycle. Uh, just keep left. Have your firimbi, have your whistle. Mm, so the firimbi has a role. Now you know. Yeah, to always alert people that you're around. Mm -hmm. Dress bright. Dress very bright. Dress very bright. And then you can do 50 when it's safe. If mm -hmm. it's not, just do 30 kilometers per hour. All you right. will reach to your destination. You are not held with the traffic. Okay. And now as we close, of course, a very important um, uh, feedback here. Ken Eugene Anangwe says, good morning team, wishing you and the viewers fruitful a fruitful day. Hashtag the morning drift. Now we want to, of course, close this session. We're just beginning. Remember the hashtag is just beginning. We're going all the way to 10 a.m. But usually we want to have this discussion because most of you are leaving your houses and we want you to arrive alive. So Mr. Otet, my expert here, will give us his probably last, um, you know, point and then lead us to the video of the morning. If you are aware of the three types of collusions we have spoken about this morning, you have gotten an in-depth knowledge of the possible injuries that surround you. There is no specific person. Everybody is a potential danger to that, including me. Even the presidential convoy, they clear the road, but these dangers remain staring at them these are only to make you aware and be prepared mm. to embrace safe driving and defensive driving i told you the segment is short tomorrow we're still here never ever leave thank you and there you have it. That's just how I'll close this. Never ever leave and never ever miss the Arrive at Live segment. Also continue engaging with us on our Twitter handles and our social media platforms. Mr. Otet here is the founder of Road Safety. And Safe Driving. And yes. Safe Driving. Practices. Practices. So go on Twitter and start tweeting. You have any questions, you know where to direct them. His number is also always open. You can WhatsApp him. We just want you to be safe. Ultimately, the end goal of this debate and discussion is to make sure that you are equipped with awareness 
on those roads. Now we'll leave them with um, a video. This is not supposed to scare you, remember, but just to see how people are hurt when you're gone. So like you always say, keep the promise that you made to that little child, to your parents, to your family, to your spouses, that after I go to work, I will come back and fulfill this particular promise. But that's how I close this segment on the Arrive Alive. Until tomorrow, same place, same time, right here. We'll be back with the review.